Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the lover's card from the tarot, which is also a card about free choice and the unintended consequences of those choices we make. I thought for a change, why not record this in my backyard here in Texas, which I find beautiful and I really enjoy the natural beauty here. Welcome to this deep dive into the most intriguing cards in the tarot deck. The lovers. The lovers tarot card represents not just romance, but also choices free will, and consequences in our lives. This card signifies a significant departure from the previous cards we've discussed, moving away from the external influences of nature, society, and parental figures like the Empress, the Emperor, and the Pope. Instead, the Lover's card represents a crucial step towards individual awareness, where an emerging personality begins to make its own choices. This is a card about love, yes, but also about choice, free will, and the delicate balance between passion and virtue. The Lover's Card, particularly in decks like the Tarot of Marseille, draw inspiration from Renaissance wedding portraits, whether it's Dante and Beatrice, Petrarch and Laura, or even the tragic love stories of Tristan and Isolde, and Romeo and Juliet. This card captures the essence of union, choices, and the pivotal moments that redefine relationships. In the Marseille Tarot, we see a man standing between two women, one symbolizing sensuality and lust, and the other representing virtue and selflessness. This imagery echoes the duality seen in Titian's painting Amor Sacro e Amor Profano, where sacred and profane love stand in contrast. But could these women also represents something deeper, perhaps a mother figure embodying the internal conflict described by Freud in the Oedipus complex. Here the man is immobilized, torn between conflicting desires and, and only by understanding these women as individuals can he free himself from their spell. Now let's connect the dots in a way you might not have expected, using a little bit of art history that is. The card's visual and thematic elements also resonate strongly with the Romantic and Pre-Raphaelite movements. These schools emphasize emotion, individualism, and the sublime beauty found in nature and the human experience. Think of how the Pre-Raphaelites captured idealized love and tragic beauty, often drawing on medieval and Renaissance sources, just as the lover's card does. The art of these movements with its lush detail and intense emotionality mirrors the complexities of love, choice, and passion depicted in the lover's card. The lover's card also has a strong mythological connection which, with the figures of St. George or Perseus, archetypal heroes who must confront a damsel in distress and terrifying monster or mother figure. In this context, the card illustrates the crucial moment in the hero's journey, the transformation of lust into, higher, into a higher form of love, which propels him towards a spiritual advancement seen in the next card. Now this is where things get interesting. Let's talk about the Cupid. Often depicted above the figures, he's typically blindfolded, and that has deep symbolic meaning. Cupid is the god of desire and represents the irrational force of love, an unpredictable energy that catches us off guard. His blindfold implies that love is often irrational, something we don't control. We say love is blind because when we are in love, our judgments are clouded and we overlook the flaws of our partners. But this also speaks to a deeper truth. Real love requires us to embrace imperfection. The blindfold could also symbolize the unpredictable, almost chaotic nature of falling in love. We can't see where love will take us, which is both exhilarating and terrifying. 
Cupid's arrows, or should I say errors, remind us that love doesn't follow a logical path. This blindfold suggests the love is an adventure of the heart, not of the mind. However, the blindfold also warns us, are we blindly following our desires or are we choosing love consciously? At its core, the lover's card is about choices and consequences, a crossroad in li a life where decisions must be made. This theme is echoed in the stories of Adam and Eve, the judgment of Paris, and Hercules' choice between virtue and vice. In numerology, the number six associated with the lovers holds profound significance. Pythagoras considered it the perfect number, symbolizing harmony and balance. It represents completion and integration of opposites, much like the union depicted in the lover's card. But what if there's more to this than meets the eye when it comes to this number? In the book of Genesis, the world was created in six days, culminating in a harmonious existence. The six-pointed star or seal of Solomon ties into the hermetic axiom, as above, so below suggesting that choices made in our personal lives reflect and affect the larger cosmos. The number six is unique in numerology as it embodies both masculine and feminine energies, representing a balance between them. This duality is mirrored in the lover's card, where the harmonious interplay between different aspects of the self or between partners creates a complete and balanced whole. In numerology, the number six also signifies nurturing, responsibility, and care, all of which are essential elements in a meaningful relationship and the choices that shape them. The Lover's Card invites us to ponder whether free will is an illusion. Throughout history, great philosophers have debated the concept of choice and whether we are truly we truly have autonomy over our decisions. Spinoza argued that humans are driven by a series of causes and effects, which makes true free will impossible. Nietzsche suggested that our choices are often dictated by unconscious drives and external pressures, while Sartre, a staunch advocate of existentialism, believed that we are condemned to be free, forced to make choices even in the face of overwhelming external influences. Let's pause for a moment to consider the implications of this. These perspectives challenge us to consider whether the choices we make are genuinely our own or if they're a product of our upbringing, society, and unseen forces. Think of the scene in The Matrix where Neo must choose between the red pill and the blue pill, between saving Trinity or saving humanity. This card prompts us to explore these deep philosophical questions about na the nature of free will and choice. In today's consumer culture, the theme of choice is omnipresent, yet often misleading. The lover's card can serve as a metaphor for the false dilemma fallacy, where we are presented with an either-or either situation that doesn't capture the full spectrum of possibilities. Consider the debate between investing in space exploration versus addressing climate change on Earth. This binary choice is a delusion, much like the two-party political system, where complex issues are reduced to black and white choices. Another example is the illusion of choice in consumer markets, where we are often presented with a range of options that seem diverse, but they are in reality controlled by a few large corporations. Think of going to the supermarket and choosing between a dozen brands of cereal, most of them owned by the same few companies. In fashion and very predictable patterns, brands give us the appearance of choice, but ultimately drive us into conformity. The lover's card invites us to challenge these illusions and seek deeper, more meaningful choices that align with our values. Now, what if I told you that this is just the tip of the iceberg? Even the algorithms on social media platforms are designed to present us with choices that seem individualized but are actually shaped by data-driven models. We're given the illusion of freedom, but our decisions are subtly directed by forces beyond our conscious awareness. 
This is where the card reminds us, are we making real choices? Or are we just following what's presented to us? When you think of the lovers, think of adolescence, the first taste of independence that comes with falling in love for the first time. This card is not just about sexual awakening, but also about the moral and intellectual independence it symbolizes the moment we be begin to make decisions that separate us from parental influences and lead us towards our own path. Now, this next piece of information is crucial to understanding the bigger picture. Carl Jung's con concept of individuation is particularly relevant here. Individuation is the process through which a person becomes distinct and develops their unique identity. During adolescence, individuals undergo significant uh, psychological development, striving to integrate different aspects of their person personality into a coherent whole. The Lover's Card reflects this journey, highlighting the choices that define who we, we become and the values we adopt. This next point really brings it home. Jung believed that forming meaningful relationships is a crucial part of individuation. Through these relationships, individuals learn to balance their inner desires with external expectations, ultimately achieving a sense of self that is both autonomous and connected to others. The Lover's Card embodies this delicate balance, representing the intersection of personal desires and moral responsibilities that shape our identities during the formative years of adolescence. Hey, we've all been there. Moreover, adolescence is a time when individuals begin to question inherited beliefs and values, seeking to establish their own principles and ethics. The Lover's Card symbolizes this quest for self-definition, urging us to make conscious choices that align with our true self, rather than simply following societal or familiar expectations. This process of self-discovery and the courage to make the independent choices are at the heart of what the Lover's Card represents. Now, get ready for what's coming because every story has its twist and you're about to find out. The Lover's Card often represents a love triangle and the internal conflict between passion and conscience. Here, love is depicted as a hesitant man, caught between vice and virtue, between two roads, or an ordeal, depending on the situation. It could also be about deciding between a wife or a lover, a strict, jealous mother, and a potential girlfriend who hasn't earned her trust. It's also a card of marriage, partnership, and harmony. A reminder that love is about finding balance and uniting with others in a meaningful way. When in love, we often enter a state of mind where everything is peaches and cream. Everything feels perfect. We see the person we love, flaws and all, through a lens of idealization. And just when you thought we were all done, here's the next big idea. Let's talk about the neuroscience behind love and happiness. When we fall in love, our brain release, releases a cocktail of chemicals. This blissful state creates a neurological response that releases dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin that makes us feel euphoric. These feel-good chemicals are what create that blissful sensation we often associate with pleasure and bonding. These chemicals make us feel happy and connected, reinforcing our desire to maintain the relationship despite any imperfections. But what's fascinating is how these neurochemical reactions also play a role in our choices. Dopamine, for example, it's linked to reward and motivation, driving us to pursue the things and people that make us feel good. However, the brain's response to love is not just about pleasure. It's about attachment and long-term bonding. Neuroscience shows us that love is both a fleeting chemical reaction and a deep, enduring connection that shapes our behaviors and decisions. But wait, there's even more. Neuroscience explains that being in love activates the brain's reward system, particularly the ventral tegmental area, VTA, which is responsible for feelings of euphoria and motivation. This heightened state of happiness can sometimes override our logical reason making us prioritize emotional connections over practical considerations. The Lover's Card captures this phenomenon. 
illustrating how our pursuit of happiness and emotional fulfillment can lead us to take, make choices that are deeply personal and sometimes conflicted. So here's the thing, and this is fascinating. This internal struggle between following our passions and adhering to our conscience is a universal theme, highlighting the complexity of human emotions and the intricate balance required to achieve true happiness. The Lover's Card encourages us to navigate these emotions thoughtfully, seeking harmony between our desires and our moral compass. Now, what if I told you that everything you thought you knew about this card is only half the story? Beyond romantic love, the lover's card signifies the pursuit of beauty and truth. So they say the opposite of love isn't hate, but indifference. Think about that. That sense of curiosity and wonder kids have about life and the world around them is what artists try to tap into through their work. Maybe that's what alchemists would call the elixir of youth. And that's really what the lover's card is all about. In alchemy, love is a necessary stage in the spiritual journey, bringing about unity after the dissolution of the materia prima. It represents partnerships of all kinds and the balance between the masculine and the feminine aspects within us. The attraction depicted in, the, in this card goes beyond physical desire. It's a metaphor for our passions and pursuits in life. But let's move on and take this to the next level. From a humanist perspective, individuality and happiness are deeply interconnected. Humanism emphasizes the importance of personal growth, self-actualization, and the pursuit of one's own potential. The Lover's Card aligns with this by encouraging us to follow our true passions and find beauty in everything we do. It's about embracing our unique identities and fostering connections that enhance our sense of self and fulfillment. Now, what I'm about to share with you could blow your mind. And it's because in today's digital age, concepts like Juval Noah Harari's dataism are shaping our understanding of indiv individuality and happiness. Dataism suggests that algorithms and data-driven platforms increasingly influence our choices, including whom we love and who we how we pursue happiness. Social media algorithms curate our experiences Often, often limiting the diversity of our interactions and reinforcing existing preferences, which can constrain our free will to choose and explore new relationships or passions. The impact of dataism challenges our, the traditional humanist approach by introducing external influences that can manipulate our desires and decisions. The lover's card therefore serves as a reminder to maintain our individuality and pursue genuine connections and passions amidst the pervasive influence of technology. It encourages us to seek authenticity and find true happiness by aligning our choices with our inner values rather than being swayed by algorithm-driven suggestions. Just think about that for a moment and stop and think how much of our choices are influenced by these algorithms. By balancing the ba humanist pursuit of personal fulfillment with an awareness of these digital forces shaping our lives, the lover's card inspires us to navigate the complexities of a modern existence with intention and integrity. It calls us to embrace our unique paths, find beauty in our endeavors, and cultivate meaningful relationships that contribute to our overall happiness and sense of purpose. And what comes next? is a personal insight you won't want to miss. Now let's take a moment to talk about my version of the lover's card from the Tarot Neocolonial de las Americas, which was published by US Games in 2021. This card tells us a story that's a bit different, but just as rich in symbolism. This next example will make you rethink everything. Now picture this, a European explorer setting foot on what would be considered the New World, encountering a young native girl just as she's about to get off her hammock. This image is inspired by an engraving titled Américo Vespucci Awakens the New World. The scene is an allegory of how Europeans perceived the Americas at the time as a land 
as a land to be awakened or discovered, completely disregarding the fact that it was already inhabited by advanced civilizations. Above the couple, we see a winged Cupid again. But here's the twist. Cupid isn't just about love. He's pointing his arrow at this startled girl, and we're left to wonder, is it an arrow of love or perhaps something more sinister, like death? This ambiguity adds a layer of, of complexity to the narrative, highlighting the unintended consequences that often come with exploration, colonization, and even love. The figures here represent a new Adam and Eve, positioned under not one but two trees of knowledge. These trees serve as the sustaining pillars of the hammock, symbolizing the merging of the old and new worlds. In the distance, an island shaped like a Taino semi, a sacred mountain, reminds us of the spirits that still inhabit the lands, even as it's being claimed by an invading force. And here's where the card opens up a whole new layer of meaning you might not have considered before. This card re reflects not just a potential relationship between these two figures, it is the uneven relationship between the old and new worlds, full of complexities, contradictions, and unintended consequences. While history often paints a picture of winners and losers, the reality is far more nuanced. Without the Colombian exchange, for instance, our modern global civilization would not exist as it does today, and many of us would not even be here. Traditionally, this card implies love relationships as well as the union of opposites, but it also speaks to inspiration, passion, and full commitment to a project. To truly engage with this energy, we, we must work with our hearts, following our gut instincts, the pursuit of beauty and truth. Just remember, every choice, every commitment comes with its own set of perils and unintended consequences. And let's reflect on that for a moment. As we conclude, let's reflect on how the Lover's Card resonates with our personal experiences and relationships. Are we comfortable with the choices we make, or do, we, do they leave us conflicted? Love, as represented by this card, is not just about romantic relationships. As I said, it's about doing what you love and following your passion, embracing your true desires, and pursuing what brings you joy is essential for a fulfilling life. Now, the following quote, quote is one of my favorites by one of my favorite Taro authors, and it's by Alejandro Jodorowsky, who aptly captures this sentiment. La isla de yo se convierte en archipiélago. This transformation signifies the expansion of the self through meaningful connections and the integration of diverse aspects of our identity. This is what the lovers is all about. So I want to thank you all for tuning in, for listening. May you find love not only in others, but also in the things you do and in life itself. Embrace the choices that lead, a, lead you towards your true self. And cultivate relationships that reflect your deepest values and passions. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and remember, as Lennon McCartney once said, all you need is love. Bye-bye.